Same way it came to letting the recruits know that he was going to be your guy. Did you did you reach out to them? Did you have Bobby call them himself? Just how did that process go? What's been the reception on the recruiting trail? Well, I mean, we was trying to keep it quiet, but you know, I was in on um, all these player uh, evals and leaving and all that, and we was trying to keep it quiet. So y'all let them know, you know, that he was coming back which always happens, by the way. Um, I'm not being negative there, it just happens. Uh, so uh, I was getting a lot of calls. I didn't have to call them. I was getting a lot of calls and and uh, there was a lot of excitement about it. But I, we didn't have to worry about calling the kids. They were, they were calling us. I know the roster is still pretty fluid at this moment, but KJ specifically, do you think, yeah. does this maybe hold some weight with him? And, and would you like to have him come back and have the opportunity to play for You know, for I'd rather not really uh, answer that uh, out of respect for KJ and things of that nature. But uh, KJ's give to the, given to the university, you know, good years and set a lot of records and things of that nature. And uh, whatever he wants to do, uh, we're, we'll be uh, supportive of it. When you pick up the phone to talk to him, I'm just curious, like, what's the what's the emotion? Do you feel, I don't know, do you got, like, heat in your back of your neck? Are you just calm and collected? Like, what is, like, your internal on, feeling? When you're calling Bobby Petrino about the job? <laughs> what's, uh, what's the, you get a pit in your stomach? I don't know. I don't know. No, well. Is it just cool? Um, hey, brother, what's up? No, 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 no. First time or two, I didn't FaceTime him and, after that, I did, you know, but uh, uh, I was trying to be honest with you. I was just trying to find the best man for the job, and in my opinion, I did. And uh, so that's all I was trying to do. Does this allow you also, um, you know, I don't know this day and age, because it's the same with Kendall and Dan, as you said, in terms of them handling the offense, but your job has changed so much yeah. just in terms of, I mean, you're almost like a GM yeah. in a lot of ways. You obviously feel that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think I think uh, Arkansas Edge is, you know, whatever the name is it for everybody else. I think that's changed a lot of, of your head coaching responsibilities and more than that time, whether it's raising the money or trying to figure out, you know, where, where different guys, you know, are going to be able to sit in the – in the NIL and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I think I think just a lot more time, and obviously, uh, you know, we have guys that you know come in going into the portal, and you're not going to talk them out of it, but simply because they've already been poached by somebody else and told the finances and everything else. We do not do that here. We don't, but it happens all the time, and and uh, NCAA at some point has to put some some type of penalties on people that are poaching players because it's going around the country uh, all everywhere. We're not. And, and, uh, but, uh, so that puts a lot more time into, uh, you know, the portal. You got to go D2 portal, junior college portal, the one double a portal, uh, B BCS portal. And then, and then you've got to go with obviously the portal in division one. So there's just a lot of time, that happens in recruiting, and you can imagine this, Trey, that the portal opens up in December, it opens up in April. So you have two opportunities uh, for someone to um, poach financially uh, your players. And um, so that's why it was so important for us to get the Arkansas edge. Uh, Sam, I know I've heard ADs and coaches talk before, like they've always kind of got a, a list of coaches in mind that if a position ever came open that they might be interested in them. I'm wondering if having faced him at, at Missouri State and having to scheme against him, did that ever cross your mind? Like, hey, if I ever had the opportunity, I might want to have him work for me? I'll, I'll be honest, it really didn't. I think the first time that it really did was when I got a text, you know, um, from his agent. And I was assuming that if I got a text from his agent that there was some interest there, you know, as well. And so I just picked up the phone and I don't know if I had hair raised on the back of my neck or not, but <laughs> I think I just picked up the phone and we visited, you know. So, uh, but um, 
once I fig figured we could do the deal, then I, the the closer that I thought we could get to doing it, the more excited I have about you know more excitement I had about it. And uh, uh, the bottom line is we, we we need to win games, and I thought that was the best possible way we could do it. As far as exit interview goes, how far along would you say you are percentage wise? And that's got to be like each guy got. I mean. A great meeting, a bad meeting. It's got to be very up and down for you. Um, I was done at uh, – I was through it. We had a uh, recruiting meeting at 2 o'clock this afternoon. I was done about 1.55, and I'm completed. So we went Monday, Tuesday uh, – went no, Tuesday, Wednesday, and today and got through all – however many it was, maybe 100 guys or whatever it was, a little bit more. And uh, – um, so we're through, and you talk about the portal and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I feel really good about where we're at on the football team, but uh, obviously things can change uh, simply uh, because of the fluidity with phone calls to talking to coaches and all this kind of stuff. So we got a great university, a great situation here. Arkansas Edge is helping us tremendously. Um, and uh, we want to keep the guys, obviously, uh, on the team that uh, we want to keep. And But we, we can't if they don't want to. But that's why the portal's open and, and we'll go out and replace them. Coach, take us back to the brief conversation you all had right after that game out here. And if there's ever been conversations like at conventions with you and Coach Petrino in the there's any relationship that kind of goes back through the years? I, to be honest with you, there's a hell of a lot of respect uh, from me for him. And uh, the uh, communication, I, I don't know, Coach may remember something different, but I think the first time I really spoke to him was when uh, Missouri State was out here. And uh, uh, at that time, I, I told him that we, I was grateful for him and thankful for him because we had used everything that he had done here uh, in recruiting, and it was helping us. And I told him that I appreciate him for that. And uh, I, I don't, I can't recall what was said after the game, to be honest with you. But I, th I believe, unless he remembers a different uh, time, I believe that that was the really the time we had spoke. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys. Hey, welcome back. Um, I was curious about the phone call from Coach Petr uh, from Coach Pittman. Uh, how that went with you and your agent reached out first. Is that still Russ Campbell? I know that was twelve years. Uh, ago. No, actually, my agent is Christina Phillips, and uh, she didn't tell me about that. I just learned that today. So, um, but I appreciate her. You know, she was. She reached out to me when I was at Missouri State, and she said, hey, let's get you back in the game. And I said, uh, Christine, I think I'm just happy doing what I am right now. And she she was on me about, no, nah, you can't do that. We'll, we'll work at it. We, it might take us a while, but we'll keep going. And she convinced me, OK, let's let's work at it and see if we can get back in the game. And it's it's been a process, uh, but it's a lot of credit to her. Uh, listen to the, you on the podcast this morning that you did. Um, You've been going through, looking at players, looking at film and stuff. You've seen anything that's jumped out specifically, any any players or anything like that? Yeah, I haven't been able to get into it enough, you know, just because uh, also looking at recruits and anticipating portals. and uh, But I've been able to watch some of, some of the individual players. Uh, and then I've had guys come in and talk to me and the, the names start going, who's that now, who is that again, who is that again? So, um, But it's a, it's a process. 
and uh, did have a good meeting yesterday with the offensive offensive group as a whole, uh, and that was fun. I enjoyed it. Now that you're back in the game, um, any trepidation coming back here? And just what do you what do you want to do? What do you want to get done here, the next few years of your life? Yeah, I want to win. You know, I want to want to see us. Uh, I came back here to to support Coach Pittman in winning. You know, uh, I, I appreciate him a lot. Uh, when he did, when he did uh, send that message that coach, uh, this is Coach Pittman, I'd like to talk to you. Uh, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. <laughs> I was like, Yeah, that's gonna happen, really. Uh, and then, and then we talked for a short amount of time, and he said that he had an interest, and and we set a time to talk uh, where we both had time later on, um, and that that was exciting. You know, I felt. Uh, Hey, maybe this is really going to happen. Is it, could it possibly happen? You know, I talked to my family and stuff. That could possibly work. And then we had a great talk, great conversation. I think it was over an hour, some, uh, maybe longer than that. And uh, and then when I got off the phone, I said, "Man, he didn't offer me the job." You know, uh, I was I was a little bit, you know, surprised about that. I thought, "Man, I'm maybe I need to do a better job interviewing again." So. Uh, but it was a process he was going through and, and taking his time. And um, I was just anxious to talk to him again. So your offense at A&M last year, can, was that, how much of it was you? And then you got to see Arkansas in Arlington. What did you think of what was going on and the personnel Arkansas has? Yeah, that's a loaded question there. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that when, I, when I took the job at, at – uh, uh, at a and m Jimbo wanted to keep the same uh terminology and and call things the same way they did uh it was hard it was hard on me i was staying up all night i can remember the first scrimmage uh i was up at 2 a.m in the morning w woke up at 2 a.m in the morning to get ready to call plays for the first scrimmage just understanding what the terminology was what the formation was and and it was a different it was not only um calling the, the plays different, but the formations, the way they called the formation is probably different than anybody else that I've ever been around. Um, you know, normally you call the strength where your tight end is going to align, and there it's where your slot receiver is going to align. So just getting the, the connection to be able to do that was, was very difficult, but I uh, worked hard at it, and um, I thought we had a pretty good year. We went through a couple quarterbacks, which was hard. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it. I think that's the one thing that, that um, you know, when that happened, when Jimbo lost his job, but, uh, I thought I would I want I want to still coach, just because how much I enjoyed being in the classroom with the quarterbacks, uh, spending time with the offense, um, you know, just coaching football, teaching. It was fun being back in the in the uh, meeting room and teaching. You know, I started getting in this profession as a teacher. So it was really fun to, to get back and do that. Uh, reading some of the, the quotes that have come out since you accepted the job, you've talked about always wanting to come back and this being a dream. I'm just curious, was there ever a time since you left where maybe there was some anger towards this place? And when did that anger maybe turn into a desire to, to return? No, there never was any anger at all. You know, I was always a Hogs fan. You know, I watched – people would ask me, are you going to watch the game? Are you going to watch them play? And I watched as many games as I could. I cheered for them. I rooted for them. You know, love the players. Coach, I know you returned to the, the Little Rock Touchdown Club a few years back, and, you know, it was well-received and everything. But could you have ever imagined at that time, you know, you said you always loved the Hogs. Could you have imagined getting this opportunity to come back and, and coach like this? Well, like I said, I thought about it and dreamed about it, and uh, I didn't know if it would ever happen. Um, so certainly, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to be back here. It's it's going to be a lot of fun, and I truly do love Arkansas, um, the university, and the state, and the people. You know, I think it's the the most special place I've ever been. And you mentioned to kind of see some of the individual players that Arkansas has on the roster. I know it's still a fluid situation, but given your history, I was wondering about if you had any particular thoughts on the quarterbacks that Arkansas has here, uh, Jacoby Criswell, Malachi Singleton, if you've had a chance to look at them and see how, what you thought about them. Yeah, I've had a chance to, to watch their video and see, you know, some of their practice video, some of their game video and see things that they can do. And 
obviously you like the talent that you see there, um, arm strength and, and mobility and different things they can do. Uh, you really don't know a lot until you get out on the on the practice field and start practicing with them. So we'll look forward to that. And you know the the rules are are uh, of such now where we have time to meet with them when we come back from Christmas and and uh, you know get in the classroom with them. So it'll be fun to see how much they they understand about the game of football. Bobby, last night you know twenty thousand people you know yelling your name. I mean, how how does that make you feel? It was exciting. Yeah, I felt good about it. Uh, you know, it's, and again, I I got to say it's a it's a credit to Sam. You know, to be able to, to bring me there and and uh, allow that to to uh, go on. Uh, I thought I think it's just a credit to him. It's you can see the confidence that he has in in himself as a man, and how much he loves the university and wants to do what he believes is best for us to go forward to win. Um, is a is a real credit to him. In, in over 10 years how are you different now than you were in 2011 yeah I mean everybody's different you know that and you're different than you were back then so um I, hopefully I, I've grown as a as a coach as a teacher as a husband as a father um I believe totally that I have uh but I hope I, hopefully I'm better tomorrow than I am today I remember going to the groundbreaking for the Smith Center. I think it was maybe a Friday before a home game, but you never got to get in that building. I assume you've been in there now. Just kind of well, what's your thoughts on that building and, and finally finally getting to, to work in there? Yeah, it was it was fun to, to walk through it and see it. Uh, and, you know, yesterday I, I got uh, – I took my own tour, I guess, uh, rounded up one of the young guys and said, hey, take me through the building here and show me it around. So – uh, it was exciting to see it. Uh, they certainly did a good job with it, and um, you know, it'd be fun to start working in there. And have you decided if you're going to be on the field or in the press box? Uh, I haven't even thought about it. You guys are way ahead of me. Coach, uh, you talked about having to learn new terminologies. Sam, I'm going to turn you loose on. You call yeah, what, what we talked want? about was be able to come in and, and run, you know, run the offense and put the offense in and do that. And, you know, one of the things I've learned throughout my career is that, uh, you know, you, you utilize everybody and you try to get everybody's input. And certainly I want to see the assistant coaches have their input. And we, when, when I interviewed with coach, we talked about um, certain things. If he, if he walked in the room and asked me about this, asked me about that. Um, what what do I think about that? And I'd say, well, I'd welcome it. You know, there's a reason he's known as the best offensive line coach in in America. Um, and you know, if he has certain thoughts that he wants to do on short yardage and goal line, um, I communicated to him that when I was calling plays at Arizona State, Bruce Snyder um, ran short yardage and goal line. That's what he wanted to do. That was his something he was very, very proud of and very, very fond of. And, you know, it's um, if, if coach wants us to do something on, on short yardage and goal line or third down, um, you know, we're definitely gonna, gonna work on doing it. And I think that's how it has to work. That's, that's how it goes. He's the head coach and we're gonna, we're gonna do as much as we can to keep him satisfied and happy. And, you know, that, as an assistant, what you try to do is, is keep the head coach happy and, you know, not chewing you out. So uh, that's one of my goals. Let's let's make sure he's not chewing me out every day. This is not football. So tell me about Northwest Arkansas. You look forward to hitting some balls in the bushes at Blessings or Beaver Lake. What what did what what goes through your mind that I'm I'm back in Arkansas? I got a lot to learn, man. I can't even find my way around. It's changed. You know, it's really changed. The The roads are a little bit different. The way you get places are a little bit different. Um, I drove up in front of the this building right here, and I'm like, wow. They just they redid that too. So first thing I got to do is find out where, where I'm at. Um, definitely like going to the lake. That's something that we've always enjoyed as a, as a family and love to do. And it's on my bucket list to be able to slalom when I'm 70. So I've got to get keep working on that, make sure I'm in good enough shape to, to be able to, I don't get up anymore on one, to be honest with you. I, I get up on two and drop, just cause it's so hard to, to grind, to get up on one and nobody skis anymore. My kids have, have totally went away from me and they don't ski, they surf and wakeboard. And 
I don't even see the fun in that. You go so darn slow. I don't know how it's fun, but um, I'm still gonna still gonna water ski. I've lost a lot of balls at Blessing, so maybe if I get to play that sometime, I'll, I'll find a few of them that I left out there. <laughs> I have to drop a ski too, man, so. Um, well, I don't have to, I choose to. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm I, kidding. I can't get up on one. Um, you're, you're signaling. I, I wonder what you thought of the signaling, uh, sign standing flap this year, and how does how that apply to you maybe, or, you know, how, 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 what's the future of signaling as well? Do you think helmet devices are? On yeah, the rise? I, I think that they should have done that a long time ago. You know, that, uh, and I don't know anything about, you know, Michigan and what they did or any of that. I, I honestly didn't pay any attention to it. Um, but I do know when you, when you went and played Clemson that they were going to have your signals. They had guys on the sidelines standing there with the sheet of paper with your signals on it. Um, and that was tough. And, you know, the, the um, SEC and the ACC and have talked for years about, you know, putting the piece in the ear. And, um, and one of the issues that you always have in, in the NCAA is everybody has a vote. So there's a lot of schools that, that play football that can outvote the major conferences that don't have the money for that technology to be in their helmets. So um, that's why they got to do something about it. But... Uh, it's become more and more relevant uh, throughout the years that I've been in about people stealing signals and calling defenses and offenses that way. Speaking of money, uh, you just your thoughts on Arkansas Edge and how that might help you in the portal and things like that. Yeah, I got some reading up to do on on that. You know, I I've, I've been kind of in a whirlwind, so I haven't I haven't even been able to check up. I know Coach told me that he was excited about the new uh, NIL deal that's going on. And, um, you know, at, at A&M, the assistant coaches knew nothing. We, we weren't involved in any part of the NIL. I didn't know what anybody on the team got or didn't get. Um, so I haven't paid enough attention to it yet. I got some work to do. I remember that 08 LSU game where you guys threw deep in a short yardage situation and, and you were like, well, this is the last time their corners are going to be cheated up on us. And you've always kind of done stuff like that, like maybe not even so much just about the plays that you're calling, just about when you call them and you're feeling stuff. What has changed the most about your offense since you were here last? Hmm. I, I, I honestly don't think a lot has changed simply because I, I, don't, I don't think it's about plays. I don't think it's about what you do. I think it's about how you use the players that you have, you know, how you get the ball to a – Jarius Wright, Joe Adams, you know, how you get the ball to um, Dennis Johnson and how you work, you know, the different situations of the game. And um, so what I love to do is is utilize players uh, and then be really good at the situations of the game and the players really understand, you know, what we're going to see in third and short, what we're going to see in fourth and short and what we're going to see in the red zone or what blitzes they run from the 15-yard line in and get everybody on the same page uh, and then practice the heck out of it. And then when you're on the left hash, 35-yard line, first and 10, you want to take a shot at the end zone, everybody knows what we've done, what coverage we expect, and then what to do if we don't get that coverage. You know, or what are you going to do on fourth and one, um, left hash, you know, game on the line. Uh, we ran the ball the previous two times and got knocked right in the mouth. So let's uh, let's give us a little play action in there and see if we can get it. So I, I kind of like to really work on situations and, and players. We saw your messages after Ryan Mallett's passing, and I know you loved him. And um, I always, always remember also people used to say that Ryan Mallett was the perfect quarterback for your system. And then – you went to Louisville and you had Lamar Jackson. And I was thinking, well, what's Lamar Jackson then? Yeah. What kind of quarterback do you like? I mean, and Tyler Wilson was a different quarterback for you. What 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 type of system, quarterback, I guess, in your system would you like to have the most? Yeah. I mean, Ryan was pretty perfect because Ryan was as smart as you could possibly be. He understood the game. He understood his, his players around him. He understood when you um, made a call what you were thinking. Uh, he was really um, a guy that that uh, you could anticipate what he was going to do. You know, when you saw the coverage and the play called, he, he would probably go the, the way he did in practice. 
you know. Uh, Lamar was, was the same way. You know, Lamar was a guy that really studied the game plan, really knew what he wanted to do, what we wanted to do as a staff. Both of them could get you out of a bad play. You know, you're not always going to hit the call as, as a play caller. And you can be really, really aggressive when your quarterback can come out there and say, oh, yeah, this play action isn't going to work because they're blitzing two guys off the left side and change, change the play or the protection for you. Uh, and that's what those guys allowed you to do. You could just, you know, call it up and have a lot of freedom in, in your thoughts of being aggressive. And then if it wasn't wor worth a darn, they can get you out of it and get from a bad play into a good play. And that they, the freedom they give you as calling a, as a play caller really helps. Two more, Brett. Coach, I noticed I couldn't help. You got a little emotional when you're asked about why this is like a dream. And he said, you love this state. Expand on that. Why is that? Is it, why is that? It's obviously more than just a job, isn't it? Yeah, I think, you know, the relationships that I was able to have and, and make and, and then even continue after I left, you know, was, was something that's always been special. Are concerned and say maybe you don't deserve a second chance with the university. What do you do? I've been told winning cures all ills, but it seems like there's more than that. What do you say to that? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of on the on the. Um, I'm not really sure what how, what words to use on it, but my beliefs are that it's okay for people to disagree, have different thoughts, have different opinions. Um, there's no add will to it. Nobody should have that. You know, this is, I grew up where this is in the United States of America and everybody can have their own thoughts, their own religion, their own own feelings on everything. And, and you know what? That's okay. We don't have to do anything about it. There isn't going to be anything done about it. Um, that's just how it is. And I think that's one of the greatest things about a football team is guys come from everywhere, every different walks of life, different colors, different religions. And then you come together and you love each other and you go out and compete hard together and give it, each other a chance to win. So I, I don't have any ill feelings towards anybody that disagrees or um, I just wish it was that way for everybody. Last one, John. Winning? You know, winning is the end result. Winning is the end result of doing everything right. So the top priority is to teach and the players, teaching them not only the, the playbook, but how to compete, how to be tough, how to um, have passion. Uh, it's different now than it used to be because you have a shorter window to do it. You know, with the nil and the transfer portal and all that, you know, you used to be able to build it for a year, three years, and you know, that's what we had. We had those guys that were together, grew up as little kids, got beat up on when they were freshmen. You know, I remember Joe Adams saying, they're just not beating us. They want to kill us, you know. And two years later, he was like, that's what we're going to do to everybody, you know. But now you don't have that window. Now you got to do it in a shorter period of time. So it's just a different challenge that you have to attack. Coach, so a lot of the former players that you had here at Arkansas post on social media, they're all excited and approved. Have you had – any comments, text messages from former players that are here? And what have those comments and conversations been like? Yeah, I've had have had a lot, so it's 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 pretty cool. I, I it was fun when we came here and played. You know, we can, I got into the locker room and all of a sudden I got out of the shower and there's Joe Adams and Colby Hamilton standing there. I said, "How did you guys get in here?" You know, they snuck in the locker room to say hello. So it's it's been pretty cool. Coach, appreciate you. All right, thanks, guys. All right, you just heard uh, Sam Pittman and uh, Bobby Petrino for the first time since Bobby Petrino is hiring back at Arkansas's offensive coordinator. Just a couple of recap notes that Sam Pittman said that Bobby is excited to be back in Arkansas. In fact, he was one of the first calls that he made. They addressed the past and they addressed it quickly and they quickly moved past uh, the past of Bobby Petrino. He wanted to hire him because of his head coaching experience. It will be Bobby Petrino's offense. In fact, coach said that he's going to rely on uh, Petrino on a daily basis starting pretty much right now. Now, Bobby, you heard him talk about as well, too. He wants to win. He came back here to do just that, support Coach Pittman and win games. There never was any anger, he said, when he left Arkansas uh, 10 years ago. He watched as many games as he could. He 
he says after he left, he dreamed about coming back and he says, I, can, I can't tell you how excited I am to come back. He says he loves the state, he loves the people of the state and he loves to be back home in Northwest Arkansas. Now, if you wanna watch this whole media conference again, we will be streaming it tonight at 6.30, directly following uh, our five news at six. It's on our free 24-7 uh, streaming app. You can download that app on your smart TV by searching KFSM or we'll send you a link directly to your phone. Just text 479-785-5000. Text the word PLUS for a link to download that streaming app. And we'll